This is what silence does to the narcissist. Let's do it. Hi friends, Tammy M. Joyce here, Empowerment Life Coach, creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comment section below. And if you're back, of course, welcome back. Thanks for showing up and for tuning in. Either way, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. So what happens when you flip the script, go silent, and ignore the narcissist? Well, many things. And in my view, it's a good way to go if you actually want to rid yourself of all the pain, drama, and trauma once and for all. Now the truth is, the power of silence is often seriously overlooked and underrated. And when it comes to dealing with a destructive narcissist, it can actually be your best friend and most powerful weapon as well as being a very effective self-care strategy. Make no mistake, friends, choosing to not engage with a toxic person is an act of self-care. Not always easy, I know, but when you're able, more often than not, it's gonna be your best option. Now that said, keep in mind that when we're talking about people who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, we are quite literally talking about people who are energy vampires. That's fundamentally what is going on when you're enmeshed in or working to break free from a relationship with a narcissistic person. And this is never more true than when you're an empath with little to no codependency recovery under your belt. You feel completely drained and depleted, quite frankly, because you are. The reality is narcissistic people thrive on intensity, drama, emotional chaos, as well as your fear, pain, anxiety, confusion, and discomfort, which is precisely why they smirk with such smug satisfaction anytime they think they've succeeded in upsetting you. When they know they can affect you this way, you're a good target, an excellent source of narcissistic supply. And what ensues is fully vampiric behavior. Narcissists will poke, provoke, and deliberately bait you, whether that be passively or aggressively, in order to elicit an emotional reaction so they can then literally feed off of that negative emotional energy. They'll go out of their way to manufacture an intense high voltage reaction, if you let them, and then proceed to feed off of it just like a vampire or demonic entity would. And if you want to go deeper and fully understand this highly manipulative baiting tactic that narcissists use to their advantage, you can watch this video here. Suffice to say, your intense emotional reaction to their provocations or outright relationship crimes is what serves as a source of narcissistic supply. Again, they literally feed off of your negative emotions. Negative emotions they themselves provoke with deliberate intent. So, just like the demonic feeds off the pain and suffering of the human race and quite frankly other sentient beings as well, destructive narcissists operate the very same way. And there is a connection, friends. People who go through life deliberately committing serious relationship crimes, again, no matter how passively or aggressively that might be, going out of their way to provoke and bait you by causing you discomfort, harm, or serious pain, while stirring up all manner of chaos, trauma, and drama, so they can then literally siphon the vital life force energy from your very being, are not only displaying a destructive narcissist personality pattern through their astonishing sense of entitlement and lack of empathy, they do so because it serves them, sick as that might be. So with all of that said, suffice to say, when you go silent on a narcissist, and not in a passive aggressive, game playing, attention seeking way, the way that a narcissist uses the silent treatment to punish, manipulate, control, or hurt you. I don't mean like that. What I mean is when you go silent from a place of absolute certainty and clarity, or as close to it as you can manage, even if that's simply sheer determination to finally choose better for yourself, when you go silent from a place of courage, confidence, and strength, a place that clearly communicates to the narcissist that they are absolutely insignificant, they are literally of no consequence to you, this type of attitude. When you go silent on a narcissist from that place, completely boundaried, completely clear and certain, in a way that communicates no narcissistic supply to be had here, 
When you go silent and mean it from a place of absolute dominion over your emotional state, over your energetic force field, sovereign in who you are, calm, cool, clear, collected, poised, detached, nothing to be had here, and you hold that stance consistently, reliably, and predictably, what you are doing quite literally is starving the narcissist of the one thing they need to feel alive, significant, important, to know that they matter in some way, any way, to you. You starve them out. You starve them of what has likely been the grade A narcissistic supply, your vital life force energy, they've been feeding off of and exploiting you for to this point. When you're able to do this and sustain this posture, it's game over. Maybe not immediately, but the longer and more consistently you hold the line, the sooner they will be forced to go elsewhere to get their sick needs met and leave you in peace, which is what you want, right? You don't need the last word. You don't need to be right. You're not going to get through to them no matter what you say, and they aren't going to change. If you're really smart, all you really want is peace and freedom. And let me tell you, silence is the fastest way to get there. Cutting off their oxygen, so to speak. That and finding a way to do your own healing and recovery work so you stop repeating this pattern. That is what gets the job done. And changes the game for good. Now, comment below and tell me whether or not you've ever used silence as the powerful weapon that it can be to eradicate a destructive narcissist from your life. And if so, was it effective? Let me know in the comment section below. And also, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in my eight week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class, there is a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Here's the thing. Few things are more powerful than treating a narcissist as if they are literally dead to you. Literally. They do not matter. They don't even exist. You don't see them. They're not on your radar. You're busy living your life, taking care of you, and you have no time, zero time for the BS. Literally starving them of the narcissistic supply forces them to have to go elsewhere to get their fix. And again, the good news about this is they leave you in peace. Maybe not immediately, but certainly once they realize there is no longer anything to be had from you. And the truth is, they may circle back for a period and sometimes even after an extended period, you know, check back in to see if you're suffering from codependent amnesia and whether or not they can worm their way back into your life and suck you back into the abuse cycle one more time. In other words, you may have to communicate, you're dead to me, that stance repeatedly before they start taking you seriously and go find someone else to target. But I promise you this, treating a narcissist to a healthy dose of, I don't even see you, you matter not one iota to me, communicating that they are completely and utterly insignificant to you is absolutely the fastest way to be rid of them. And I know this is a tough thing for those of you who are still in people-pleasing, approval-seeking mode. I spent many years there myself, so I get it. Before doing our own healing and recovery work, this can be hard, in particular if we're caught up in trying to get our needs met from outside of ourselves, not least of which from people who do not have any validation or approval to give, people who are an emotional and energetic match to our unresolved wounding and trauma. And of course, as full-blown empaths, we want to be nice, kind, loving, and compassionate. But how about we pour some of that onto ourselves first? How about we spend some time loving and respecting ourselves first? What if we were to do that first? And while we're doing that, how about we remember who and what it is we're dealing with when we're talking about a conscienceless individual who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism? No matter how empathic you are, no matter what a good, devout Christian, Muslim, or Jew you may be, no matter how spiritual, well-intended, or highly empathic you are, these people do not understand kind, sincere, genuine, or polite for that matter. It doesn't land. It doesn't even put a dent in what's going on with them. So although I am all about coming from a place of love and compassion while carrying the highest frequencies that we can manage, 
Of course, we want to be positive, kind, loving, compassionate, sincere, and genuine. But in the realm of relationships with these empathy impaired, highly manipulative and destructive beyond belief, deceptive individuals, remember who you're dealing with. How far has kind, sincere and polite gotten you with this type of individual so far? I'm guessing not very far. More likely, all it's done in reality is put your hand up to volunteer for more mistreatment, scapegoating, abuse, slander, manipulation, control toxic insanity, nonsense, chaos, and drama. In other words, more of the same coming at you. So again, remember who and what it is that you're dealing with. Nice, kind, polite doesn't work with these people. Not least of which people who based on your personal experience have clearly demonstrated a destructive narcissist personality pattern on repeat, no less. If you think that your kind, compassionate, loving, forgiving nature is going to get you anywhere in the dynamic with the destructive narcissist, you're lying to yourself and you know it. Yes, take radical responsibility for who you are and how you show up. And understand that silence is the most powerful weapon you can use to communicate what it is that you need to communicate to a destructive narcissist to move them into another realm and out of your experience so that you can get yourself back on track to living the life you actually came to the planet to live. Which, I promise you, has nothing to do with having a destructive narcissist latched onto your being or your life for that matter, manufacturing all manner of negative emotion, pain, drama, etc., and siphoning your vital life force energy from your very soul while they're at it. That's not why you came here. Now, despite outward appearances, narcissists are people who are fundamentally lacking in any real, authentic, or genuine personal power. So don't let the false persona fool you. Underneath the mask, I assure you, there is no genuine, authentic substance going on with these people. So for that reason, relationships with narcissists are always going to be about power, dominance, and control. Dominating you, whether that be overtly or covertly, controlling you, controlling outcomes, manipulating and controlling perceptions, and they do this by working to control the narrative, as well as controlling not just how others see you, but also how others perceive them. Now that said, once they realize they can no longer control you, they will, as I said, work over time to control how others see you, what others think of you, and how others feel about you. As the old saying goes, be careful what you hear about others. You might be hearing it from the problem, right? So never underestimate a narcissist in this regard. They'll go as far as it takes. They'll be willing to say whatever it takes, whatever narrative they believe serves their own personal agenda in the moment. And their agenda might very well be to simply turn everyone you know against you. So be prepared for that and stay clear within yourself with regard to what you can and cannot control while simultaneously exercising extreme self-care. Do not spend much time or energy trying to convince anyone of your truth, your experience, or your value. Here's the thing. People who really know you, people who genuinely love you, care about you, should be onto this nonsense and pretty quickly. And if they aren't, if they're choosing to believe the negative narrative, choosing to be the narcissist enabling little minions, we have to get ourselves to a place where we're okay regardless. And I'm not saying this is necessarily easy or that it's going to be pain free, but this is one of the amazing side effects of actually doing our own personal healing and recovery work. We become bulletproof in the face of this nonsense, able to rise above whatever lies or smear campaigns may be going on. And ultimately, believe it or not, we can become pretty unaffected in the face of the narcissist antics. And if you're not there yet, that's okay. Naturally, it hurts to have people we know and love believe things that aren't true about us. But I promise you, silence can and will be your best friend in this scenario. The truth is, the smear campaign is all the narcissist has left once you go silent on them. And it's all they've got to cling to for some false sense of power and control over you and the situation. And narcissists are desperate for power and control. So needless to say, 
No lie is too great. No tale is too tall. They'll say whatever it takes. So when you go silent, be prepared to be smeared. It's what they do. You can pretty much count on it. And we have no control over that. So focus on what you can control and go take better care of yourself so you can end up ultimately finding yourself in a much better and much happier place. Learn to rest in the knowledge that the people who genuinely love us care about us, who are worth having in our life, in our circle, they're at the very least going to give us the benefit of the doubt. If not, the benefit of a conversation. They'll want to hear your side of the story. And as for those who are so easily swayed by the destructive narcissist and their toxic gossip, anyone who is so easily swayed by all that nonsense, you don't want them in your life anyway. Good riddance. Grieve the losses and take care of you. The truth is, you deserve better, much better. And with that, I'm gonna call it a wrap, but don't stop now. I have well over a hundred more videos right here on YouTube for you to watch to help you better understand the detrimental effects of narcissistic abuse, and more importantly, learn what you need to do now to heal from the abuse so you can start living your best life in peace, confidence, and freedom. And if you want to go deeper with me, go to TammyMCoaching.com and learn about my unique tried and true process garnered over decades of experience and learn how you can become my client.